Today I'm in Kokomo, Indiana. I'm teaching a Jiu-Jitsu with Gi seminar at Indiana Martial Arts and Fitness, the core Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, ran by Terry Gruel, one of my black belts, great friend, amazing guy. He knows so much about martial arts. Grandmaster in his own art, went through the whole process, got his black belt after a decade training Jiu-Jitsu or more. And um, today I'm here visiting the guys, the girls, and uh, I'm gonna do a good guard pass um, seminar with many drills. So stay tuned. I uh, will record more techniques this time. This is Indiana martial arts and fitness. Uh, so right here, look. Again, hand in the middle controlling this axis here, right? And again, he tries to, to crunch, come up. I'm not using any strength because I have my hand in the right place. If I have my hand lower, he reach out to my lapel, my head, anything really easy. If I go right here in the middle and look at my wrist again, right? Granted that I have the belt though. He tries to sit up here. If I'm like this, he might be able to chop my arm and pull it up. So that's why my wrist digs and pushes. This hand here is not outside, this is very weak. He can attack me in a normal platter here on my left side. So I use my palm, I still grip in the pants because I have the pants and I see how I do a little leaning here. So he tries to rotate his hip that way, he tried to rotate that way. Kind of a little harder because I'm pinning this side. It doesn't stop him from hip escaping much but at least like it's a little harder. I'm here and I'm gonna open guard again, putting pressure on the pelvic bone here, knee in the middle, heavy toes on the back, windshield wipe, and I go and I try to keep my toes as much as possible facing forward or at least like 30 degrees there. Now, say that he pulls his foot on my hip, because probably that's all you're gonna be doing, and pulling my arm. Now, it's hard for me to reach out for the knee. So if my hand cannot go to the knee, the knee goes closer to my hand. Because he posts his foot on my hip. Now, I will keep his knee as far as height where it is, like height this way. And see how I have my right knee on the ground? Whenever I start bringing his knee to the ground, my right knee comes up. And I have to make sure that this foot doesn't touch me. Correct? And I want you to emphasize this, and I cannot emphasize enough, how much weight you put on your hands. You guys want to know how much weight you put on your hands here? All your weight. <laughs> That's it. Answer. Right? Close. Because I will take away my own base. So, again, I'm here. Put pressure on my left side. Right knee goes behind. Heavy toes. Open this toes here out. Rotation. Now, he open. Sometimes you might need to work your hands. He breaks my grip on his hip and pull my arm, and he's doing like good, putting good effort here so I don't get to his knee. So my hand cannot go to his knee. His knee goes to my hand. I hold. Right now I'm working smarter and not harder. Right now down when because a lot of people push this down but they don't bring the knee up. The guard passage starts already here. One, two. Now all my weight here, three. Now at this point, I take my, I take my own base. I punch this away, left hook, and I find myself falling on top of him. What he would do, just to create the sequence, he will frame right away when he feels like, shoot, he's gonna pass my guard. You're not gonna keep your chest open, exposed. You're not gonna keep your neck open and exposed. Is this. Okay, Just, we're gonna stop right there and then we move on. And I'll go to the sweep. Here. I want you guys to create that. You fight, 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 fight. The guy cannot pass a guard, the guy cannot pass a guard. All right, it is what it is. He got there, he's gonna crush me. Frame. Because you, we will use this, th those forearms between my chest and his chest to right away replace the guard and right away sweep. Because my goal is to become counter-offensive in a split second. I don't want to 
I have to shift from defending, 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 defending. I hope I don't get submitted. I hope I don't get submitted. I hope I don't get mounted. I hope I don't get mounted. And five minutes is gonna go by, ten minutes is gonna go by, and you're gonna your best achievement is that you survived. Not gonna happen on the street. Okay? My achievement is payback time. Every single time. Guy scored a point on me, three, two, I will score. At least psychologically, I'm not gonna let this guy be happy for too long. Show that I, I got, so um, I got the, 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 the mindset to, to overturn this. So you guys understand, so it's like the seminar is a little bit based on mindset too. So here, here, knee in the middle, open. Now he's, he's put in there because he wants to, to frame, and he might put this foot on my hip too. Right, go to butterfly with arms in. So again, I choose one side, and that's the side because I can just go for a strong stab, stuff his leg. Now, look, when I take my right knee down, I'm always doing like a weird push-up with my butt all the way up, right? Let me just go this way here so they can see. I go one, two, three, and he's framing. And he might get the head, but he's doing a great job framing here, okay? Let's go. Sir. One, two, three, frame, frame, no hands. Forearms and heel of your hands pushing. Look to escape. Oh, Luigi, can I go to his back? Yes, you can. Right? I just go to the leg here, but but I could turn, turn it. But I decided, because I'm a better guard player than a back taker, to go one, two, three, toes on the hip. And as soon as I get here, I go, one, pull his arm down, brace the hip here with my left. Why didn't you go to Omoplata? I don't know, because I have thousands of options, but that's <laughs> when my brain kicked in. Pull in, lock the top of the back, so when I staple his back, I bring my hip up, and I don't stop. Can I go this way? Yes. But we're gonna get a triangle when I go that way. So I go here to here. And up. Let's try. So good position. Hands. That weight is on the hip. Knee in the middle. Windshield wipe. Go to here. He put his feet on me here. Right? Now say that for some reason he forces more butterfly with the arms in and I'm having a hard time going on a um, inside knee here, but I, you know, maybe I managed to do this, right? Which I could do like this, look. Right, so he's holding my hands, he, he feels like he has, I'm taking advantage of, actually, of his foot being on my hip. And you should keep your foot on your hip, on the person's hip, in my opinion. Uh, not always, but you know, it could be under, hooking, this and that, and on the side. But because I'm here, and I want to do kind of the same guard pass, I'm still holding the, the, the belt, and I'm still working this elbow to guard my right side, but I just move my leg a little bit forward, and I loop around, and I have this from outside. Inside, outside, you guys already know the, the X pass. So now I go up, and I'm right here. So this is the very important part. I'm gonna go here, come up, Get my knee with a good strong contact behind the hamstring. And that's why I said that we're gonna use more our legs. I'm resting my elbow on my thigh, okay? Hand is on his side, elbow is here. Now what I will do is, I will push his leg in and keep pushing that way and I will kick my right leg all the way up in the air. And just I want to relax a little bit. Just because I believe in uh, negative enforcement through punishment. <laughs> if I see anybody posting that their leg they're supposed to go up in the air on the ground, 30 burpees. And I'm not kidding. You guys will remember. Trust me, like nobody mess up when there's some punishment involved. <laughs> Old school, right? So I open, got to this, I was here. You will understand what I mean. So. Up, look this leg. First is here. So first I take that foot off me here. And then I'm right here. 
Now I slightly took the contact. Look at my right leg. Right? Not this. This is 30 burpees. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. 30 burpees. You guys remember that? You guys? Yes, sir. Sir. Yes, sir. Because I want to do this. It's so fast. It's so good. Sometimes you, want, you open guard and you're right here and you have this side. You see this happening a lot. So just go here. All day long, all day long. Even from grip inside. If I have the grip outside, it's even better. I'm going. I can go with this hand here. I can do the same guard pass with this hand here. I can do the same guard pass with this arm here. The only difference is to start. I rest my elbow on my thigh. And I punch. If I have my hand on his chest, so I punch that down. If I have my hand here, I punch that down. If I have my hand here, I don't need to punch, but I just need to get a good control. Look my leg, because I push his leg, that's why it's an X pass. This leg is going this way, so this one can go here. Okay, so, same setup. Mr. Grove is here, have a good setup. Control, control, knee, toes, open. Right? Now, he's not putting too much effort, and I managed to do this. Right? So I'm right here. Now I stand up, go to here. Why am I here? Because I want to have all the options. Remember, who's attacking is me. So I go. If you want to be crazy detail, I go like this, and I make sure that this forearm is right here, so I can go to here. So it's this, push the leg away, create this body. And now I just step parallel. It works for me like magic. <laughs> here, here, toes, oh, oh, open, right? Have that control here or I go to here. Now what I will do is here, I wiggle my knee and I'm gonna go to the classic switching hip pass that I, you know, that's how. We name it. In. Right? Drop the knee, drop the chest, go for the head. Uh, things I've been doing when I go to the head now. I really never want to have a space between my biceps and his ear. I don't want to do this kind of thing. So every time I pass the guard, my hand is always up. Ah, I knew that already. Okay, that's good. But maybe I never thought about it. So sometimes I'll go like this. I always go like this now. Because if it's no gi, I try to find the lats and I put three fingers under his lats here. All right, don't tickle your friend. Just go here, here. And then one thing, Karen noticed, but you guys didn't notice. Or maybe you guys didn't know, didn't notice. So didn't notice. So I look at this, all right? And I open the knee out a little bit so he can tell Oh, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Oh. Um, I make him a little weaker when I bend his here, his back. Okay. If you cannot find the lats, grab because we're doing gi. You can grab this. This work working too. And I'm going. Um, at first, is the focus is this. Okay. Good. All right now. One thing is that. Second is, whenever I'm doing the switching hip, pa hip pass, I'm always gonna have this leg up. I didn't have it, because I was putting the focus there. So, um, and by the way, let me go here. I could be like this. Same position as the X pass, same position as the stepping around pass, and I still could do this. Right? And then a lot of people go underhook here, he gets the underhook, get the under, right? And now you're trying to get under hook. And if I want to get under hook from here, what happens? I have to create space. When I create space, you start like upsetting my balance. And I, because I need to do this, I'm like, good. Or sometimes you go to the pants. You know what I've been doing? I open this knee out and put my hand right here. I don't care about under hooks anymore. So 
I'm going here. He gets on the hook. I'm like, all right. So kind of like, if, even if he has the underhook, I'm kind of gonna get, his, he will want to let, let go his arm from here. Yeah. All right, so he has a choice to keep it or to pull it out. And I'm, right now I'm punching the ground next to the hip. So I'm giving him an arm bar, sort of. Will I make him tap? Of course not, but it might upset him a little bit. So I'm going here, get that thing, but he got under hook, or didn't get under hook, regardless, I'm putting my arm here, and I'm sitting out. When I'm sitting out, my foot is pushing his leg a little bit. If you guys remember that, that's a bonus. And my hand was here, and this hand now is gonna be palm down, scraping the ground and going under his thigh. As I unlock or uncross my legs, and I'm really going low, and now I'm rocking this way. And as soon as you guys finish, because you're gonna be here, first thing I'm gonna do is this, you know. Oh, sorry. All right? Have wrist locks, try to get out. Kind of a little harder for him to move. I can feed a little bit more. Sorry. Oh, you're fine. Okay? And the chair on the top of the cake is this. Oh. Because if I decide to go to mount, I control this. Sorry, Terry, I really like you. Sir. Right. <laughs> and then I can go to the mount position. Oh, man. Sorry. Oh, yeah. A little vicious. You guys say yeah. you see that again, you're coming up and having it down to you. Let me get to Jeremy so you can Oh, Jeremy's recording. Uh, Dylan, can, you, can I use you? So, I'm gonna get this beast here. Control, oh, open. He's right here. I actually, I opened the other way, but, uh, but it's fine. So I'm going here one, so I could do this. And I'm getting Dylan right here, right? Say that he didn't look for the underhook. That's fine, I'm still gonna put my hand. I'm, Now I sit out, and as I sit out, my right arm is kind of pushing him away. I cross his leg behind me, and I stay really low. And now, look how my chin is on his belly, chest is on his ribs, and then I rock him. Keep this here. Collar belts, you still have wrist locks, sorry. Or if the lapels loose, I take it out. Wrap it over, trap the arm, kind of move his head a little bit, control the knee inside or outside, move away, and get a good setup for the mount position. Right now, you guys can already go for palm up or palm down. I go palm up, tip of the lapel, under the chin, Grab any cloth, have a choke right there. So that's like starting to use the lapel here. Okay? Good? Let's go. And I have the lapel, I trap. I create good distance, I come all the way in here. I know I, let's see who can do it and who cannot do it. And if it doesn't work for you, that's fine. I, I can go here, one, two, three. Right, if you need a few steps. Here, here, here. Go, trap. See maybe if you can, if you want to, you guys can even go to mount position first. That's okay. I go right away, mount position first. And at some point, I'm gonna sit on his chest. I'm raising his head, sorry, Ty. Right. Now I grab and I pull. So don't forget, look, grab, pull, and tuck your foot. Now I go, shin goes on the ground, and don't worry about his arm or anything. You hold your shin, just roll over, lock, toes up, his arm is here. How do I get his arm to here to here? Sorry. Man. Okay. One more time. See the play. <laughs> A little French. 
Don't need to get much now, because I'm not going for the choke. Right? I'm gonna do the way that I do. Granted that he's not keeping his knee up. He's keeping his knee up, I go to mount. Let go, grab his shin. Cool? Sure. And don't roll from here. So make the perfect adjustment now. Now I can roll. Holding my shin. I'm a little sideways, which I like. Close. Now look this toes here. Up. Heel down. His arm is here. Not ideal for triangle. You still there, right? Mm -hmm. Up. Lock. Two hands. Block the forearm with your forearm. Two hands behind. Squeeze your knees. Belly up. Okay. So the more I go around, the more I meet other martial artists, um, the more we, we see the importance of training with people. Like they're, I'm not saying that because you know I'm his friend or because I want to you know be a good you know saying be flattering without being honest. No, this is not very honest. The more I travel, the more I see. Well, first I'm fortunate to be around people. Everybody in our association is open-minded, really open-minded. Meaning, uh, for okay, Terrence case, like so, he mastered his style. You know, in Goju Ru, Okinawa in Goju Goju Ru and competed and became a red and white belt. He's, you know, I call him a grandmaster, he doesn't like that, but, um, and same thing with Kerry, et cetera. But then he got into more the MMA, the kickboxing, the other styles, and, and blades, and edge weapons, and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Be like Terry, that's <laughs> pretty much. You know, like me, um, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu wasn't my first martial art. You know, I did a very traditional, very, um, uh, yeah, traditionally you can call it Kung Fu, and then I did Shotokan a little bit. I had to do Judo because of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and I l really like boxing. Mm -hmm. So I boxed, and, and I got into boxing because back in Brazil, before we were training with MMA gloves, we used to train a lot of, uh, you know, Vale Tudo, which is everything goes, you know, like back then. and. Um, my coach's coach was one of the first guys, like under Carson Gracie, to fight MMA. And he was big into boxing. He was a really good boxing coach, uh, good MMA guy. But back then, we, used to, we, we didn't use the name MMA. And on Saturdays, I used to train with him in Valitudo. So there was a lot of boxing, a lot of boxing drills, and et cetera, and then takedowns. But here, that I got more in contact with wrestling, and, and then started learning wrestling. Um, got back into judo with my sensei, Sensei Dennis um, Hill from um, Connecticut. And Dennis Hill, I just recorded a seminar in my channel at his school. So I, I talked, Dennis is the same thing like that. Dennis is a black belt in combat sambo, in judo, and he's amazing in judo, in hapkido, He's in the same association, Krav Maga Association, uh, Mr. Guru, and he's a black belt in mean Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And so you have the same thing, like Kelly Quarter, Kelly Quarter in Arizona, black belt in Kaju Campbell, black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I think he has more uh, other things too. Uh, there's so many people in our association the same way. You know, Wal Lysik, my coach um, in self defense and combatants, his father has been always like a catch wrestling guy, he learned other stuff. He, he was involved in the first UFC, UFC 1. Uh, so he trained in Brazil. He's a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu as well. Uh, he trained in Muay Thai. He's a black belt under uh, Joe Louis, uh, late Joe Louis. Oh, yeah. um, and uh, he trained with um, Bill Wallace, I think, too. And, and I mean, my suggestion is but the good about it here, you have everything. Mm -hmm. You know, so do the self defense, do the combatives, uh, you know. Uh, his uh, self-defense, uh, kickboxing, add, add things up, you know. And then what I like about jiu-jitsu is jiu-jitsu can use it as your hobby, let's say, mm -hmm. because you can practice every day. Like, you can grow every day and in a safe way. We cannot go for spear elbows, but I mean, like, everyday food, life, you know, like, 
You're not going to be here forever. You know, but people train Muay Thai, you know, a lot. And it's, but I'm saying, like, intense, the intensity of Jiu-Jitsu can be really well dosed on the ground, like, you know, controlled. Makes sense? And, of course, you can spar, control, and etc. So it's a good question. I, I, I suggest everyone, because another thing, too, not always you can translate the techniques and import the techniques to what you're doing, but the mindset you can. So when I trained, like I said, I, I trained with, with mainly firearms with two, two guys. One is Kyle DeFore from uh, the Four Performance um, and, and Bill Rapier from MTAC Shooting. So uh, Kyle has a really good combatants because he was a, you know, one of the top in the SEAL team back then. And um, combatants are striking really strong in blades and the, all these guys, is the, the SEAL guys, they, they had the, the training base on SIAC. I'm not part of the group, I respect them immensely. Uh, I would love to have time to train. I just couldn't find anybody around me to, to learn. But I trained Kali with George Chaber, who is another guy that is in our association, who is a, um, is a black belt under Danny Noceno. Uh, so he's a JKD guy, Jeet Kune Do guy. He's a brown belt in, in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Uh, he's a Silat, uh, Silat guy, he's a high level in Kali too. So Kali has all the blades and everything, the stick, uh, 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 edge weapons. And I train with, with George as well. Now you get the mindset, like I said, from those guys that train the side, the feeder versus the receiver. And again, this is all proprietary uh, lingo here. If you want to know more about it, you got to maybe find a Sayak or something like that, or just train blades here. But uh, I'm not appropriating, you know, just a little disclaimer here, because they're very protective of their art. And I respect that immensely. But Again, the mindset really helped me, uh, and I imported that to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. You, you, you can just go online and look for Kyle DeFour, D-E-F-O-O-R. He has a video talking about mindset. I, I, I'm not copying anything. I just incorporate it and bring it. So when they talk about awareness, preparedness, and willingness, it's something that they use, I guess, in their training. You can apply that to Jiu-Jitsu, all right? Um, you can apply, of course you apply that for self-defense, they apply that for everyday combatants, for firearms and etc. But you can get, become aware of what your jiu-jitsu competitor will do. Preparedness is like to do the job, to go compete and get ready. And the willingness to go compete and fight and not give up. You know, so you import, in my opinion, those concepts and, and right, I think, I don't know, that's how I think nowadays. I don't get too encapsulated, I love jiu-jitsu. I still teach, if I need to teach Baron Bolos de la Rivas and, and, and anything that is like the flavor of the month, the new school, but I keep the fundamentals. You know, and I, the only thing I know, like, okay, this works here because we have a soft padded floor. And that's great. But on the street, we're not going to have this. So this technique might not work. Just have in mind this. If Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is the only martial arts you know, and you've never thought about self-defense. Oh, I'm a pacifist, I never want to defend myself ever. That's fine, no problem. But if Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is the only martial arts you know, if something happens outside, I can guarantee to you, you're not gonna be striking. You're gonna be like, you know, tied up and try to go for a takedown. And, and then if, it, if you hear somebody goes for a double under, you're gonna, you know, you're not gonna think like, I need to have double unders and pummeling. You know, <laughs> you're gonna go for, uh, you know. Same thing with women. That's why I think like it's so important for women to train jiu-jitsu. Because if any dude wants to grab them, they're gonna go, uh, you know, get out of here and choke them. You know? So, if you only know Brazilian jiu-jitsu, I can guarantee to you that when your stress mechanism, like your stress response kick in, facing a, 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 a dangerous and uh, a crisis, the first thing gonna come up is, your training. Yep. And that's why I say, and uh, two things, Bill Raper say training is the way, like pretty much we need to train. And um, if you look at the four levels of consciousness, uh, the competence, so, sorry, four levels of competence, I, I, ha I think I have mentioned that. So we have four levels of competence. One is unconscious incompetence. You walk through that door, you don't know how bad you are practicing this. So you're totally unaware. You look at, you're sitting from outside, I'm like, oh, I think I, or it can be right here, just show the technique. 
And then you look at it, I'm like, I think I got it. And then you go do it, and I'm like, yeah. Luigi, can you help me out? Okay, I'll go there. So it became consciously incompetent, or conscious incompetent. Like, you know that you're not competent doing that move, or doing that technique, or training. So now you're aware. So I'm going to explain. Hey, uh, Daniel, right? Yes. Yeah, Daniel. Um, get your leg, put it over here, and then you're going to go, okay, my leg, one, two, three, four, five, one. So it became conscious, competent. This is like pretty much everybody goes through the. Mm -hmm. What you're aiming for is unconscious competence. I don't think. I'm right here on a de escalating situation, verbal judo, however you want to call it, you know, and he still want to get it, you know, try to go tackle. I'm just saying that not for striking because not what we're doing. And he tries to go two arms under. I just go, that's what I'm going to do like every yeah. single time. You know, get two arms under the armpit. That's unconscious competence. Yeah. That's like every lady will do. Every guy will do. You know, and now if you're training and anything else, you know how to transition to maybe a clinch and throw some knee and throw some elbow. And then if you need to put a blade or whatever. You know, so that's why we train. We train here. You guys became, you went through the four levels of competence without realizing, you know. But I can guarantee that right now you guys are about on the third level. And the more you practice and review this, what we worked on, um, you guys eventually we're going to get to the unconscious competence. Cool? Yes, yes. Just finished the seminar here at Indiana Martial Arts and Fitness. I love coming here. I was teaching at Terry Gruel's place, Indiana Martial Arts and Fitness. You guys saw that. Amazing group of people, kids, adults, all levels. Try to go from basics to advanced. Um, had a really, really good time. Um, stay tuned for more seminars coming up in a few months. I will post more techniques. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification button. I also created one more section here on the channel with some techniques from uh, other seminars and uh, in my school too. So that's from my other channel, Core Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Association. I also record a podcast uh, episode with Terry talking about open mindedness in martial arts and what he has been doing as well. Check it out at the Fight Team Podcast. But don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button, the little bell sign, so you know when I post more stuff here on YouTube. Thank you. Thank you for watching and thank you for the support.